Hello, and welcome back to more Films Under Constant Critique, where we take a look at films, some good, some bad, and some are downright awful. I'm Bongo Baikov, joined by our host, Maverick Dren Zaria. This week, we're taking a look at the 1983 film, 2020 Texas Gladiators. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. <laughs> I would like to go ahead and just publicly apologize for making you watch this movie. Can we watch a real movie after this one? I I would I would like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. This had a limited release on June tenth, nineteen eighty three, in the United States. Not limited enough, apparently. <laughs> This is our first Italian movie. We had so many to choose from, and we chose this <laughs> one. Granted, I can think of some worse ones we could have picked. Um, that probably scares you. <laughs> yeah, that does a little bit, actually. Oh, boy. One of the posters for this has pictures from other movies on it, <laughs> such as Death Sport and Rollerball. If I remember right, Death Sport... Death Sport was a Roger Corman movie starring David Carradine. Yeah. Honestly, that probably would that, that would be a better podcast than this. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the taglines was, "When Earth becomes an arena, murder becomes a way of life." That that is a terrible tagline for what this movie actually is. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find. Oh come on, give me a fucking poster, damn it! In the year 2020, hordes of road warriors swarmed across our shattered world. It was a time in need of heroes. It was time for 2020 Texas Gladiators. <laughs> Okay. Is that better or worse than... Uh, slightly better, I would say. It's a bit long, but it's, I guess, slightly more accurate than the other tagline. It incorporates the title. <laughs> How would the other one incorporate the title? When Earth becomes an arena, murder becomes a way of life for 2020 Texas Gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was directed by Joe D. Amato and George Eastman. So now you know who to blame for this one. Um, that, that's good, that's good. Joe D. Amato's filmography is way too long to list. I'm, But to give you an idea of the kind of movies he makes, Sexy Pirates. Ooh. The Ator movies. Do you know what those are? I don't think I do. No. They're like Conan ripoffs. Some of them. Oh, of course. Some of them were on Mystery Science Theater, actually. Um, and I've seen a few of them. Oh. They're pretty bad. Um, Caligula. The Untold Story. And lots and lots of porn. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What else would an Italian be directing? Including some of the Emmanuel movies. <laughs> George Eastman is an actor. And some of his credits include some of the Django movies. The Italian oh. Yeah. Fellini Satyricon. 
<laughs> so that's how we get our Fellini connection. I guess it is an Italian movie. Uh, <clears throat> and 2019, after the fall of New York. Wait, hold on. No, is this... What do you think it's ripping off? So that's obviously ripping off Escape from New York, but the naming style makes me think that that movie and 2020 Texas Gladiators are supposed to be connected. Well, let's see. Did this come out before or... It, it also <laughs> looks like... Uh, 1983. It also uh, George came. East... It also came yeah. out in 1980. They came out the same year, so I don't think this is a sequel unless... Well, then again, that has happened before, where the first movie and the sequel came oh out the same God. year. I mean, Son of Kong came out the same year as King so, Kong. So, George Eastman uh, was also in a movie uh, called Warriors of the Wasteland that released the same year. I just watched a bit of the trailer, and there are props shared between that movie and 2020 Texas Gladiator. I actually have this movie. It's on one of those, like... Really? I think it's on, like, a 20-movie pack. But, I mean, the trailer looks a bit more exciting than the 2020 Texas Gladiators. Uh, George Eastman only directed two movies... This one, and Metamorphosis, which has nothing to do with Kafka, before you ask. I, I was actually just about to ask if it was a Kafka adaptation. It is not, from what I can tell. The cast. We have um, people I don't know, but I do recognize some of the movies they were in. Al Cliver, who was in Zombie 2... Which was like an Italian Dawn of the Dead ripoff. Interesting. Because uh, in Italy, Dawn of the Dead was titled Zombie. So mm. this movie was called Zombie 2. So it was trying to cash in on it. The Black Cat. Which, yes, that is an adaptation of the Poe story. The Beyond and Warriors of the Year 2072. Okay, I'm kind of curious about this one. I'm not going to lie. Although, granted, maybe we've learned our lesson with this one. <laughs> <laughs> See, that that's the problem with this is I'm seeing a bunch of these posters for other movies these guys were in. And the posters all look fantastic, but I know the films have to be just terrible. Yeah. Sabrina Siani was in the Ator movies. What a shock. Ooh, more Ator connections. Cannibal Terror and Conquest, which, like you said, these are movies with great posters, but they're pretty bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that Conquest poster is awesome. Conquest has a very memorable poster. Like, I remember that poster more than I remember that movie. Like, that looks like a Conan the Barbarian, like, mixed with Star Wars type movie. Yeah. It's not, a, it's nowhere near as good as that poster. <laughs> Peter Hooten, who was Doctor Who's Strange. The reason why we chose this movie. Yes, because we were looking at his filmography because he's in uh, he played Doctor Strange in the TV movie from the 70s <laughs> he's also in the Italian uh, The Inglorious Bastards huh and Orca the Killer Whale which was like a uh, Italian Jaws ripoff, except it's an orca. It's produced by Dino De Laurentiis. It's actually a pretty entertaining huh. movie. Certainly much better than this. <laughs> like, it actually has a good cast. <laughs> like, look at some of those cast members. 
is you got Richard Harris, Charlotte Rambling, Will Sampson, who played the Chief and one for the Cougar's Nest. Mm. Keenan Wynn. I mean, for fuck's sake, how did Bo they Derek. get... Bo Derek. Bo Derek, Jesus. Well, she was famous, but not for her acting skills. Um, to fair. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, where was I? Uh, the music was done by Carlo Maria Cordio, who did music for, what a shock, the Ator movies. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many Ator connections. I know. Pieces. Caligula, the untold story. These are all quality okay. movies. These are all quality movies. They, by they the way. sound quality. <laughs> Zombie Five, Killing Birds. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean. Terminator Two, Shocking Dark. What? What? Because that's another case where it was like an Italian ripoff oh, that tried to, sequel before the that yeah. tried to pretend to be a sequel because it was made before the actual Terminator Two. Yeah. So. Um, Midnight Ride, which that is the, uh, that's that canon movie I mentioned a while ago where Mark Hamill plays a serial killer. Oh, okay. Which would also be a much better podcast than this one. I mean, there'd be so much to talk about. And he did the music, this doesn't surprise me at all, for Troll 2. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. It sounds, it kind of sounds like the music from Troll 2. <laughs> Although, obviously, this is nowhere near as magical of an experience as that masterpiece. Um, speaking of which, initial thoughts. I'll let you go okay. first. Because fuck so you. So, I... <laughs> 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 uh, I fell for the classic, uh, I judged the movie by its cover. I saw a couple of the posters, I heard the title, and I was like, this has to be just, like, insane. It's probably not gonna be good, but it'll at least be fun. Uh, I was right about it not being good. <laughs> I was not right about it, uh, being fun. Uh, yeah. We, we've done quite a few movies at this point where we describe their sort of editing style and their pacing as, and then we get a scene of. Yeah. This, this again, goes down to one of the worst cases I've ever seen. I, I don't really know still what the overall plot was. It was just things happened and we followed, like, a group of guys throughout the whole thing. I was going to say the movie is about 2020. <laughs> Texas Gladiators, but it's not really about that either, so... No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, I don't know if this was the case for you, uh, but I was only able to find the movie on YouTube, and it was the German dub of the movie. Oh, okay, I did not watch the German dub, it was an English dub. Okay, I, I watched the German dub with English subtitles, and so... That probably made I, I it like more... I, like, half understood. <laughs> I don't know if that would have made it more or less entertaining, actually. I feel like it... So, Cause I'll, the only I'll get laughs... into it more, but... I'll, I'll get... I'll, nah, never mind. I'll, I'll get to that when I'm getting... Yeah, my yeah. Thoughts. Um, later. <laughs> but that... You couldn't find the... Okay... Whatever. I know, uh, I, I clicked on like three different videos uh, on YouTube and they were all the German dub for some reason. That's so straight. Wait, send me a link to the... Yeah, yeah, let me, let me find my link for it. Because the one I watched was... It was and there, there's it was something the else about the version dub. that I watched that I'll have to talk about here. Uh, Although, granted, the version I watched, like... It was, like, clearly ripped from a VHS, so... Okay, the... Wait, that's the one I watched. Wait a second. That can't be right. Hold on, no, it, it was in German. 
Hang on, no, it, I swear it was in German. What? I don't remember it being in German, because this, this doesn't have subtitles. When you scroll through it, it doesn't have How subtitles. How did this happen? Hold on, I, I was watching this on my TV. Did I click on... How did this happen? I can't find it now! Your TV I can't must have had some it. weird settings or something. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I swear, I'm gonna find the, the version that I watched. <laughs> That's the one I watched. Um... Uh, okay, uh, give me a second. Is I this like to... a. Is there a Mandela effect going on here or something? Because I, I found that one. I heard English and I was like, "I good, that's fine, I'll watch that. And then I like stopped like a minute in after like the trailer at the beginning and came back to it and I guess I found a... Okay, hold on, Th this is the one. Give me a second, I have to get it off my phone. Really oh yeah, quick. I was gonna, I was going to mention that too, but we'll, I'll get to that again. Um, man, this podcast right, is going So I great. guess I guess this is the one that I watched. I know for a fact I clicked on that top one though. Let me look at this. It's age restrict. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to go to a different tab then. Because uh, here's the thing: it's. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll talk about this later. But this this was the German dub, and I had to use auto translated subtitles for it. Why? Why is this in English? It's this one's not in English. I know for a fact. I'm listening to it right now. Well, I found one part where people talking and they they're speaking. Yeah, in no, English. I that, that's one of those that's one of those parts that I'm going to get back to, where uh, I, I'll just talk about it more later. But just know that I watched mostly the German dub of the movie. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, I found another part that's in German. What the okay. hell? Okay, what is good. up with this? Why is one part in English for the okay, okay. Okay, should <laughs> I'll get I get into that later? Should I get to my initial thoughts now? Um Or were did you have anything else to say for your initial thoughts or should I? No, no, just the movie sucks. That's all I need to say. Okay, okay. So we chose this. Um you found it because of Peter Hooten. Um Yes. You're like, oh, Doctor Str I don't even know which character- what character did he play in this? Good question. Uh, I- his name was Halicron, and I couldn't tell you which one he was. Because <sighs> they all looked the same. I think it was the guy that had the beard and curly hair. He was one of the good guys. Yeah, probably. That was probably him. Yeah, yeah. Beard and curly hair. That's who he I was. I don't remember the character names. I'm just gonna have to take your word for it. Hell, I don't even remember the characters, <laughs> but I'll get to that. <laughs> so, yeah. But also, I agreed to do this just because I thought the title was funny. Because 2020, I mean, just the fact it's like a post-apocalyptic movie set in that year that piqued my interest yeah. um yeah maybe at some point we could do soylent green and then we could see whether they got 2023 right or not or, <laughs> or was it 2022 wait a minute it was 2023 or 2022 uh uh 2022 okay soylent green was 2022 sorry i was off by a year but uh. <laughs> So, I had never heard of this movie, and there's probably a reason for that. This was bad, and <laughs> not in an entertaining way. It was just, it's just your generic Mad Max ripoff. Nothing all that interesting got added. I laughed at a few things, but those things mostly came from the bad English dub, which apparently you didn't even watch that, so... <laughs> I guess I got slightly more entertainment out of this than you did. But yeah, the plot and characters were so bare bones in this, to the point they might as well have just been walking skeletons. I mean, for fuck's sake. And honestly, I could end it right there. I don't have much to say about it, because, I mean, it's just... 
it's a bad movie where not much it, really happens so it, it literally is just there's a scene after scene after scene after scene and that's that's how the movie moves um would you believe it i couldn't find letter malton's review for this movie <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm sure he would have loved it 3.5 out of 4 okay okay <laughs> So the plot, um, not that there is one. (laughs) From what I could gather, there's these groups in the post-apocalypse fighting each other. I assume they're in Texas, but I doubt... because there's a sign that says Dallas at one point. Although, granted, this doesn't really look like Texas, but anyway. No. It takes place in 2020... So 2020 Texas, that's about all that's accurate with the title, because gladiators, yeah, no. They're not really gladiators. No, there's not no. not a single gladiator in this movie. Now, obviously COVID overshadowed everything in 2020. But I do vaguely remember hearing about something like this happening in Texas, so I'll give them points for I remember accuracy. hearing about some Nazi named Black Satan going down there. Was that his name? Uh, in the German dub with English auto-translated subtitles, he was called Black Satan. I didn't know that was his name. Wow, that's funny. Do you think he would have been a good contender for best bald guy in our awards show? <laughs> Maybe he might have had. He might have been up there with Darth Maul. Does Darth Maul count as a bald guy? <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, <laughs> I guess if we count Lord Darkness, then Darth Maul would count. Okay. Um, yeah. So. I watched a VHS rip that was on YouTube. Although the picture quality was all over the place. Like, there would be some parts that looked 240, some that looked 720. So it was, you know. And the the YouTube copy, if you can't tell, the the title of it has the term ravioli action in it, which (laughs) I don't know if that's an actual term. (laughs) I'm going to look it up, ravioli action. (laughs) Of course, recipes are the first thing. Oh, okay, so it looks like that YouTube channel that uploaded it. They upload a lot of Italian movies, and they call them ravioli action films. What other movies have they uploaded? Oh, Blast Fighter, uh, Thunder, Thunder 3. Let's see, let me open up there. I'm seeing if I know any of them. Battle of the Star. Oh, they just uploaded 13 days ago. Space off. Fusili (laughs) sci-fi! What? What? So what this guy does is he uploads these Italian films and then he names their genre after some type of pasta. So there's Battle of the Stars, which looks like Italian Star Wars. It's labeled as a Fusili sci-fi movie. Of course you have the Spaghetti Western. You have Cannellini Crime. (laughs) <laughs> macaroni combat. I've heard the term macaroni war before. Um, I've seen Battle of the Stars. That might have been another one on one of those like fifty movie packs. Now that I think about hmm. it. This man has uploaded so many Italian movies to his YouTube page. Oh my god! I mean, yeah, they probably aren't. <clears throat> I doubt anybody's going to take him down, because, I mean, who who really... That's fair. Yeah. (laughs) Does anybody really care if you have the... If you upload uh, 2020 text gladiators to YouTube? Like, it's not like anyone's going to watch it. (laughs) Unless they're doing a podcast on it, like a bunch of schmucks. (laughs) (laughs) 
Honestly, I think that I think this would have been better to do like a riff track style video on. Probably, yeah. But okay, sorry. Getting back to what I was saying, the YouTube copy I had had a trailer at the beginning. Yes, for a movie called Raiders of Atlantis. And I, I, so I, I looked away for a second, and I didn't know that that was a trailer. And so I was like, "Hold on, what's happening? Why, why is everyone already killing each other? Where are we?" So I was watching that, and I thought it was the wrong movie for a second. It was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of like the beginning of uh, *My Python: The Holy Grail*, where like it's uh, they show <laughs> dentist on the job, and, and but then they realize, oh, the projector put the wrong movie. It was kind of like that. Then I realized it was a trailer. And then I, like, looked it up. I'm like, wait, I, I've seen this before. <laughs> You've seen that movie? Yes. Look, I've watched a lot of just weird Italian, like, apparently this is an Italian and a Philippines movie. That doesn't surprise me. Um, now, do I remember anything that happens in this movie? No, I don't. Um, oh, uh, apparently the guy that did, uh, the Atlantis Interceptors did Cannibal Holocaust. I wish you hadn't brought that up, but yes, that is the same director. <laughs> uh, but Raiders of Atlantis would have made a better podcast than this one, I'm assuming. <laughs> Will we do it? Probably not, but, you know, um... And then I, but yeah, I was just like, wait, what the fuck is going on? And then it got to the credits, and I'm like, okay, wait, this is the right movie. Okay, I'm watching that. <laughs> Whereas you, you just went and looked for a different copy, I guess. I don't know what happened because I found it, and then like I, I like paused it for a second, and I came back, and everything. I don't know what happened, man. Okay. But I uh, yes, so I'm I'm. I'm going to preface this with, I, I watched the German dub, but throughout the movie, it happened like three or four times, it would randomly switch to the English dub of the movie for like 20 seconds at a time. Oh, so they probably had the same uh, sound effects then. Okay, so maybe... Yes. Maybe you did get some of the unintentional hilarity that I got out yes. of parts of this. Okay. But here's something interesting. So the copy you watched, you mentioned the quality was all over the place? It was, Yes. Uh, the quality of the German dub was actually, like, pretty consistent throughout. It wasn't until it switched to the English dub scenes that, like, the quality got lower. Like, for the most part, the quality was fine with the German copy, so. Okay, so it, it was a trade-off, I guess. So <laughs> yes. I got the English dub, but you got the German <laughs> dub with the better picture quality. Okay, so... The first thing I noticed about this movie, the music sucks. <laughs> yes, it's this just awful synth music. It's this, yeah, it, it, parts of it sounded like it should have been from, like, an NES game or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> like an LJN game, specifically. An LJN game. <laughs> I don't know which one specifically, but okay. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go Beetlejuice, why not? I don't remember how bad the music was in the Beetlejuice game. Let's make sure not to say that name a third time. Um, oh, that's a good point. <laughs> so the... Uh, um, <laughs> and it's the same composer for Troll 2, so I mean, when I found <laughs> that out, I was like, okay, that, that doesn't surprise me in the least, because the music in that movie also sucks. Um... So the opening of the movie is people I don't know dragging some nuns into some broken down building. Yes. What? I was already confused. And then they like they try nailing them to some boards like their crosses and well Oh Jesus, is this the fastest we've gotten attempted rape in this I think so, and podcast. to add on to it, it's not the only time it happens. Uh, in this scene alone, it happens twice. I think it happens four times throughout the entire movie. It's It happens a lot. <laughs> Apparently somebody watching Mad Max and their takeaway from uh, The Road Warrior was rape. 
Apparently. Jesus Christ. Um, and the, I, I don't think a movie on this podcast has this much frame in it. No. At least some of what we've done so far. It's a bit far. excessive. Um, I think the only other ones that came close would have been like Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, but even that one, it wasn't quite as much. Yeah. Um, and then some guys with guns kill a few of them and they run off. So, yeah. That literally is the movie. Just, and then, and then, yes. and then. Uh, it, it, it was right after that, after, after that group of good guys just kind of threw smoke grenades in and shot at people. Uh, that's when I started to realize what this movie was going to be. Uh, in my notes, I wrote down, this podcast may not be possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, also, another thing uh, about the title. Um, 20, 2020 Texas Gladiators. For some reason, I was expecting there to be chainsaws in this movie. <laughs> I was expecting there to be like a like, a, like an arena fight or something. Yeah, that yeah. too. But also, I think part of it, I was thinking it would be, uh, I guess I was thinking it would be 2020 Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something. But... <laughs> oh god, that would be so much more entertaining. Like Leatherface in the post-apocalypse. Jesus. And okay, so they they just start fighting with like axes and swords. Also, these guys aren't wearing shirts. <laughs> no, they 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 have like a leather strap and then like a bandolier with bullets on. And that's yeah, it. it's like they're out of a fucking Rambo movie or something. Um, and it also just didn't help. Or that... a Bad Mad Max film. Or a Bad Mad Max movie. Yeah, there's just not a lot of dialogue during this, especially at the beginning. Like. Just, it's just this happens and then this happens. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna guess that even if there was dialogue, it probably wouldn't have helped much. Probably not. Yeah, I mean, because there is dialogue later in the movie, and it didn't help much. Um, one of the Texas gladiators sexually assaults a girl. Is <laughs> basically 2020 turned everybody into assholes. Apparently, and, and so wait, that, wait, that's actually, in that, like that's wait, that's so true. That's true, not just of this movie, but just reality as well <laughs> in real life. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, sorry. What were you saying? I, I said it, it was like two sexual assaults within the first five minutes of the movie. It's just, yeah, it's it's too much. Too much rape. Yeah. Can we do it? <laughs> Can we can our next movie not have rape in it? That's the other thing we should <laughs> aim for. Um, well, our standards are getting really low for what we watch on this podcast. Yeah, I mean the fact we let movies like Alien Origin and Twenty Twenty Texas Gladiators <laughs> slip through the cracks. The fact this isn't the worst movie we've done on the podcast, like that says it's something. It's really sad. Well, it's not in the top five. Okay, it might be in the top ten, but it's not in the top five. It's not in the top five. Um, but anyway. But yeah, two of the Texas Gladiators fight, and then they cast the one guy that tried to rape the girl out of the group. So I guess there's one group here that has standards, and the other doesn't. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Although the woman uh, they rescued and... doesn't... Like, she has a problem with this. Like, she's, like... Yeah. And th this was the first scene that switched back into English for me, by the way. Okay, okay, yeah. It's a pretty important scene, to be fair. Because <laughs> yeah. it's saying... So I, I am at least thankful for that. Be it's saying, basically, what this scene, what the thesis of this scene is, is that an eye for an eye is not good. <laughs> that's very important to know because no that's a, such a groundbreaking idea that we need a whole scene around it i'm honestly surprised Following... they didn't, i'm surprised they didn't quote like gandhi 
during that like yeah well it's a, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind makes the world... yeah <laughs> but uh the texas the, gladiators the, what was the other the... quote shit it was... In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> so, following their adventure in the broken-down building, the Texas gladiators uh, take the woman back to Freetown, which is... Um, I The best way to describe it is just a town. They have, like, power. Uh, some sort of, like, power plant there. They have houses and a big wall. You probably understood this movie more just because you had subtitles. Because I... (laughs) Okay, but you need need to... So the subtitles were auto-generated in German and then translated into English. Okay, that doesn't help. (laughs) So Freetown... There's a line that we're going to get to that I'm going to... Yeah, it was called Freetown. That does sound like something from Mad Max. And also, another thing from Mad Max motorcycles yes there are they really really want to showcase motorcycle stunts in this and guess what guys you're no evil knievel (laughs) (laughs) they weren't even really doing a lot of stunts on them they were just that does remind me they're actually this might make a good podcast there's a movie about evil knievel starring evil knievel Ooh. (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. I think it is it just called Evil Knievel? I guess it's just called Evil Knievel. That's funny. Evil Knievel is Evil Knievel and Evil Knievel. Or no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. No, that's the wrong movie. That's the George Hamilton one. Viva Knievel. Ah, uh, okay. Leslie Nielsen is in it. <laughs> Holy shit. Um... Huh. Yeah, it's a movie about Evil Knievel starring Evil Knievel as Evil Knievel. <laughs> Evil Knievel. And yeah, Riff Tracks did a commentary choice, so that'd be an excuse for to watch the Riff Tracks version yeah. of a movie. Okay. Um, it'd be more interesting than this, that's for fucking sure. Um, 100%. One I, I, I did will say find, were... Okay, there was one thing I found kind of interesting. When they go to that, like, wrecked town, there's, like, these guys in construction helmets working on a building. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess, that's the... it, what, what I got from it is they had, like, a power plant, and so they were actually able to have, like, electricity and things because of it, which was kind of unique. And also that people are trying to repair things in the post-apocalypse that's yeah. good to know it's the closest hey it's the closest uh, we get to world building in this so <laughs> so one other thing uh i mentioned that the subtitles were auto-generated and then translated into english so they're not always the best uh-oh uh i got i got a weird ass line that made me laugh, and I was like, this can't be what, this has to be a bad translation. Did we get a backstroke the of the main... West situation here? <laughs> yes. It was when the uh, main character, uh, Nexus, uh, his wife and his daughter come up and talk to him while he's working on a pipe. They walk away, and his wife says, so we two are going to shave your nuts. <laughs> just a nonsense line i was like what are we trying to say here oh boy oh that's nuts um (laughs) wow just wow another thing that is this movie is so blandly shot like yeah no it's which is a shame, because they have some spots that would actually make interesting set pieces. The best compliment I can give the camera work in this is that the camera stays still, and it's in focus, so you can see what's going on. But they didn't do anything creative that, with it beyond that. No. <laughs> and, and like I mentioned, that's a shame, because they actually have some, what would be otherwise pretty nice set pieces. Especially when they're in Freetown, like all the tunnels, that control room oh, area, the broken down buildings. 
Yeah. Yeah, some of the wrecked buildings didn't look bad. Granted, they probably just went and found some actual wrecked buildings and yeah. stuff. Kind of like when they were filming Full Metal Jacket. Um, another thing I noticed is... Uh, they misspelled explosive. <laughs> yes. They put an S before the P in explosive. It's like somebody heard the word without knowing how to write <laughs> it out. And it's a pretty big side, too. They show it so <laughs> many times in that scene, though. And, I, like, every time I saw it, it got, it was so distracting. Like, oh, my God. Um, um, and then a biker gang shows up, and they, lo they look pretty they're, ridiculous. They're, the, like, the yeah. costumes. I mean. <laughs> There's one guy wearing a leather jacket and an eye patch. There's one guy who was painted silver. But I don't think we ever see him again. I don't think we do, because I don't remember that, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, what? Um, and it, also, it makes you go, wait, is this movie ripping off Mad Max? <laughs> It's pretty subtle, it, it, but I feel like they <laughs> might be ripping off Mad Max. I, I will say, this scene actually did get a laugh out of me. I, I didn't count how many people were killed in the attack, but it looks like there's just like hor like groups upon groups of these bikers coming in. It looked like 30 of them died. And you know they only have, like, eight bikes to film with. So they just kept filming the same guys getting killed over and over again. I didn't, I didn't notice that. Granted, I, like, I kind of just had stopped caring at this point. If you can <laughs> believe that. Like, I wrote, we are 20... Well, I stopped caring much earlier. <laughs> I wrote, we are 20 minutes in and there's almost no character development. Who are these people? <laughs> um... One that, one detail I did find kind of funny is that that like the good guys have these alarms that go off to warn them <laughs> yeah, when the when villains the... show up. Yeah, and then they run away because I guess yeah, you might want to have that during the post apocalypse. <laughs> it might be useful. Oh, uh, apparently that guy from earlier that they banished, he went and joined the bad guys. Yeah. And something that we haven't mentioned about the bad guys yet, because we don't know it until this scene, is they're apparently all neo-Nazis. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because their leader is this bald guy wearing a Nazi uniform, and he, he like, says they're the new order. Yeah. And, like, they, they really just wanted the villains in this to be as villainous as possible, because, like, not, not only and are they murderers and rapists they're also neo-nazis nazis and i will say the german dub of um the main villain the oh that'd be guy, fitting also german black satan it's in yeah, german yeah no you can tell that the the german voice actor put a lot of effort into voicing that guy so it actually didn't sound like a terrible performance i feel like any german actor like I mean, a German actor portraying a Nazi, I mean, they're going to put a lot of energy to it. I mean, because, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, they're, like, shooting them from the fence. And I will say this. The stunts and explosions aren't bad. Yeah. They're not, like, spectacular, but, I mean, the fact that they're using actual motorcycles and stuff, you know, I mean, okay. And the blood didn't look bad, either. At this point, it doesn't look bad. There's a couple scenes later on where they get kind of lazy with it, but, yeah, in this scene, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, don't get used to compliments, movie. That's probably the closest you'll get to them. <laughs> <laughs> But if anything, this movie, if anything, this movie shows that not everyone can make a Mad Max movie. No. You would think it would be easy, but apparently it's not. <laughs> oh, uh, the acting. It's not great. Um, 
granted, what do you expect from a movie like this with that title? Oh, also the bald guy. Oh, what would you say his name was? Black Satan. Yeah, so it looks like an oh my English god, dub, he was just oh my called god, the black wait, one. Wait, so they named a white supremacist Black Satan. <laughs> black Satan. <laughs> What's next? Is his henchman named, uh, like, Star of David or something? (laughs) (laughs) Or, like, Star of David Lucifer? There we go. Um, Oh, my God. But, yeah, the the bald guy, he's, like, driving a truck, and there's these dudes with shields and helmets that come out of it, and the (laughs) shields have, like, force fields on them. And so they can't get shot by bullets. Which does become a plot point later on. And they have flamethrowers. That was like one of the only parts where I was like, okay, if they do more stuff like that, maybe this will go into like the so bad it's good territory. Because that's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of ridiculous stuff that I wish that they had done more of. Um, They're like taking motorcycles over a ramp. Um... Because I guess somebody wants to be the next evil Knievel. (sighs) They could have reenacted that part from Napoleon Dynamite where they try to go over the the ramp. (laughs) The the ramp that's like a a foot tall. Yeah, and then it it like breaks or whatever. breaks. Are you able to vote for Pedro in this uh, post-apocalyptic world? <laughs> That's the important question. <laughs> uh, I would hope so. Uh, oh, and that, that just reminded me of another Napoleon Dynamite quote. Of, this is pretty much the worst video ever made. <laughs> Napoleon, like anybody could actually know that. <laughs> They rip a woman's shirt off and she runs away. Oh, another thing. Apparently nobody wears bras in 2020. <laughs> no, there's a bunch of women in uh, just shirts that get torn open and then a bunch of other women in latex gear that just have uh, just their front halves just completely hanging out in the I air. I guess depending on when the apocalypse happened, yeah, all the like bra factories probably don't exist anymore. But the bondage so. gear factory stayed open? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What a weird future. Yeah, yeah. Was it, but is it weirder than this future? Anyway. <laughs> uh, during this whole course of events, there's an additional two sexual assaults that get thrown onto the count. There's this guy that, like, got his shirt ripped off and then gets pinched in the neck. I was like, what? <laughs> he, like, got Vulcan neck pinched or something. I don't know. And I guess they, like, f- was forced to suck a dude's dick off screen or something. Like, I- and, then, and then he got killed afterwards? And they killed him? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, no, they, they do kill him. They, it's mentioned later that he's killed, yeah. I guess nobody is safe in this future. <laughs> oh, at this point, I wrote my notes. I feel like there's not much to talk about. There really isn't. Because it's just things happening, but nothing looks interesting. Nothing interesting is happening. There's no good dialogue. Did somebody cut out the scenes with character development? <laughs> They just cut out all of the plot scenes and just left the filler. Actually, you know what it might be? What? Uh, maybe they cut out all the scenes, but they had it mislabeled. And so they took all the scenes that they cut out and assembled it into the movie. At this point, I, like, asked myself, wait, have we had a movie with less character development than this one? And then I was like, oh, wait, we have. <laughs> we have. 
I think I think a little later into the movie, like at about the hour mark, I just wrote down this movie sucks. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Oh, I also wrote, Jesus, the amount of sexual assault in this. <laughs> it, it gets a little ridiculous. This movie does just have, like, so so many, like, hallmarks of just bad, like, bad, like, low-budget Italian movies. Like, yeah. Rape, Nazis, um bad synth scores like bad dubbing I also wrote I don't even know anybody's name in this movie yeah no I I know Nexus but then he gets killed during the invasion scene yeah oh you mean the guy that looks like Nick Nolte uh he was the main character or you okay? Because there was this guy that looked like Nick Nolte, who it kind of seemed like they were setting him up as the main character, but then yeah, he like yeah. he charges at the shield guys and is killed immediately. Yeah, yeah. What a dumbass! <laughs> Although he does do that part, did make me laugh just because of how stupid it was, and also like he let out this <laughs> yell. He did this yell that I thought was funny. Just because it was so over the top. Like, it kind of felt like they were trying to do, like, a Ned Stark thing and have the person that seems like the main character die early on, but nobody cares because, like, this guy's not interesting at all. The inter the only interesting thing about no. him is he kind of looks like Nick Nolte. <sighs> a very young Nick Nolte. Oh, there there's a Russian roulette scene. Yeah, okay, hold on, we need to talk about that. So, like, this whole, like, invasion and massacre, whatever you want to call it, happens. And then suddenly we're just in a casino. And there's a game of Russian roulette happening. There's, like, a bunch of guys in, like, cowboy costumes. Like, what, is this fucking Westworld or something? And Russian roulette is going on. I'm like, okay, wait, is this movie ripping off the deer hunter now? <laughs> It kind of looked like it with, like, the bandana the one guy was wearing. Yeah. It, Jesus. Also, food in 2020 looks disgusting. Yeah. They're, like, serving some food in there. One of them says it's Sloppy Joe. But with how things are going in this movie, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they just killed someone named Joe and made a sandwich <laughs> out of them. Like, for fuck's sake. And then a guy goes in and tries to buy two women, and he has to gamble for them. At this point, I wrote in my notes, I'm only halfway into this. Jesus. <laughs> I think I checked it too, and I was like, "Oh, it's forty minutes." Oh no! You understand is this? My this pain. is an hour and a half movie that feels like a three-hour movie. It, it's it's brutal. I I had to take a break like halfway through. I think I might have as well, actually, because I think I, yeah, I probably ate supper around sometime during this. Also, but okay, so he has to play Russian roulette to buy these two women. Why? I don't know. Um, oh, have we mentioned the editing in this? That it sucks? It's not good. Like, I don't know how to explain it. And that it's it. just confusing? I don't know how to explain it, but there were, like, shots that, like, didn't flow together. No. Part of it might have also... Okay, the the directing might have also played a part of it, because there was just no rhythm to, like, movements and stuff, and the staging, like, just... Anyway. Uh, this is also about the point of the movie where I realized, okay, the quality of the copy here that I'm watching is inconsistent, because there were some shots that <laughs> were... There were some shots that were looked 720p, and others that looked 240p, and I was like, what the fuck? Um... Uh, they enslaved some guys and forced them to mine. Okay, so I... I, I 
I, I need to let you know something at this point. I like I like got up for like twenty seconds uh, to go. I just like grab something to drink. And so I when I get up, we're in the casino. I get back in their slaves and assault mine. I had no idea what had happened at all. I don't either. Yeah. It it was so it's so fast and just so poorly put together. Some of them were drinking from a ladle, although I'm not sure what was in it. I think it was supposed to be water because then when the one guy tries to give the drink to the older guy, they put a bunch of salt in his mouth to like make his mouth dry up faster. Yeah, th- this was about the point of the movie where I was like, okay, this part is boring um i guess i was in other tabs during (laughs) this part of the movie um (laughs) and the 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 dialogue wasn't very i don't remember any lines from this at all um and it it takes like no effort for him to break out of the mine either they kill one guy and then they leave (laughs) Uh, there's like a chase scene where they drive a car and shoot dudes on motorcycles with shotguns. There's one guy that I has what sounds like a laser gun. Uh huh. I don't care. I will give them this. They chose good locations to film at. Yeah. Granted, it can't be that hard to find some deserts to film a Mad Max ripoff in. Also, and the then we sound, find Native Americans. The sound wasn't very good. <laughs> There's Native Americans in this. <laughs> there were a few other things I wanted to mention, though. The sound wasn't very good. Like I, the I, sound effects are just awful, especially during like that fight scene after they escape. I know. Oh my god. Yeah. There's this one part where a dude throws a rock at another dude, and the sound effect that played was just I. I cracked up at that. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but also just i had trouble hearing it granted it was a vhs copy so yeah that probably didn't help and the yeah. dubbing the dubbing was not it wasn't good there was one guy that looks kind of like marv from home alone mixed with dennis reynolds <laughs> from it's always sunny in philadelphia that'd be a weird crossover the gang breaks into a 10-year-old kid's house. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that episode. If it's, Kevin McAllister... You can still have Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> set up traps, and it's like the, the gang from Always Sunny trying to break into his house. Oh, that'd be... <laughs> it'd be a fantastic episode. I would love that. <laughs> have it be a modern-day Macaulay Culkin exactly exactly <laughs> like maybe he like uh bought drugs for them but he didn't pay them and full- i don't i don't know exactly how this would play <laughs> out <laughs> oh man i also wrote it's bad when your action movie has boring action scenes in it yeah no it was so disappointing because they really just weren't that interesting. Like, nothing that no. interesting happened during them. They weren't shot in an interesting way. I didn't give a shit about anybody in this movie. Like, just... Oh, my God. I just... I didn't care. Like, I wrote... I wrote in my notes... Uh, I kind of just wasn't paying attention anymore at this Yeah, point. no, this is... You just kind of check out during the fight scene, because it... It's hard to describe when a fight scene is boring. Because when it's exciting, you'd be like, oh, you know, the choreography here was great, the way that this part was shot. But all this fight scene really is, is it just cuts to the same camera angles of people sitting behind rocks, pulling the trigger. That, that's all this fight scene is, and it goes on for way too long. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember. I don't care. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Um, a guy shoots some rocks and then does a goofy laugh, but not the goofy laugh. Um, you know, like the character Goofy. Yeah. 
the bald Nazi guy laughs. At this point, I wrote in my notes, <laughs> why are all the laughs in this ridiculous? Like, every time a character laughed, I just, it was... <laughs> That was the that was probably oh that's ironic actually like the the the, the most laughs I got out of this movie were when other characters in the movie laughed I guess because they were showing some emotion anyway uh, people walk in the woods boring um. Then they meet Native Americans. Yeah, they meet some Native Americans. Over an hour into this, we still have no character development or hints <laughs> of personality. I, I would like to say this is the second line that I wrote down because I was like, I can't believe they're going to do this. Oh, no. Uh, the, the Native Americans, they were talking about how bad their guns are. And then they're like, uh, we can't even fight off the Nazis because they have the shields that block bullets. And one of the main characters goes, but before, uh, but before you had guns, you used bow and arrows. And I was like, are we really going to go there? I, I, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Oh, boy. I'm not touching that one with a 10-foot pole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the climax putting that in air quotes will it be cool not really they just ride horses at the bad guys they run around with shotguns god who cares it's it's another just really boring action scene that takes like 15 minutes what felt like 15 minutes at least um is probably like two yeah. minutes um they killed the it bald had to be Nazi. Than two minutes. I refuse to believe it was anything less than ten. <laughs> they killed the bald Nazi by throwing an axe at him, and it's boring. Something. They celebrate, which that part made me happy, but only because it meant the movie was almost <laughs> the movie over. Was over. My favorite part of the movie was the credits. They ride away on horses. Marv Reynolds says, I'll be back, which is bullshit. They never made a sequel to this. And then the movie <laughs> ended. Thank Good. fuck. Okay, overall thoughts. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. This movie up. sucked. It wasn't good. I... I laughed at some of the bad dubbing, but overall, this was just boring. Um... I will say, I, I'll give props to the German voice actors. They actually weren't that bad. I, w I wouldn't know that. Um, I'm not watching the German dub to find out either. <laughs> um, well, well, okay, I might look up the Nazi dude and see how he sounds. Oh, yeah. That's probably about the only thing that would be worth it for me. The title makes it sound much more interesting than it actually is. Um... Maybe some people will like the low budget charm, but I didn't find much charm in it. It just no, because yeah. they, they didn't even use the low budget well. No, because like there's plenty of low budget movies that it can still be like fun. This one just isn't. I mean, look at Turkish Star Wars. You know, <laughs> granted they stole a lot of footage from another movie, but I mean that movie. It's stupid, but it's fun at least. Um, or hell, if you want yeah. go some good movies that were low budget, Evil Dead 2, John Carpenter's Halloween. Halloween. I mean, anyway. But I think the biggest crime with this movie is it, the title is misleading. Yeah. There are zero gladiator battles in this. How the hell do you have a movie called... 2020 Texas Gladiators, and there aren't even any gladiators in it. Not just that. The only way you know it takes place in Texas is because of a sign in the background that says Dallas. And I don't think there's any indication that it's the year 2020. I kind of expected that because, I mean, it's an Italian movie. Um, I mean, at the very least, they could have thrown in a reference to the Alamo. I mean, everybody remembers that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just, uh, well, yeah.
It, it's bad. Don't watch it. You know what? We should try to remake this movie. <laughs> and, like, actually make... For one, actually have gladiators in it. And two, you actually try... And well, th I don't know if we can do that, but we could <laughs> maybe have like bad green screen and like put pictures like of Texas behind us. <laughs> but we could have it actually be like it's in 2020, so like there will be references to like COVID and stuff, you know. <laughs> like if you're gonna remake something, you know, remake something that was bad and try to do it better. That's what. Yeah, know? exactly. So, is there I anything... I don't even want to do a proper outro. Just do... Just just roll the Andy Griffith. I think we've talked about this enough. But wait, wait, wait. We haven't ranted about the DCU yet. <laughs> Put me out of my misery, please. Good night, you stupid idiot. <laughs> Good night, you miserable slob. <laughs>